Hello, everyone, and welcome to Tuesday Talk. I'm Brenda. I'm your host today, and I'm so excited to get us started on our Tuesday Talk. We have a group of um, ladies here today with us, and we are just going to be discussing some of the things that have been happening over this past couple of weeks and talk about some of the things that are coming up, some of the great events coming up. We had the most amazing Purim this year, and I wanted to kind of start us off just maybe sharing a couple little testimonies. Um, Pietra, I would love it if you would, uh, I'm, you're, you're unmuted, good, if you would just share with us just a little bit about your experience. Was this the first Purim that you um, participated in, and how did that go, and what was that like? Uh, this was about my third Purim that I had. The first one, I would say that was the first feast, not that it's one of the seven feasts, but we which we decided to jump into. And um, so it was very low-key. We just took a gift to uh, a widowed lady in town and um, who's not Torah observant and told her, listen, there is the scripture in uh, Esther that says we should give to you. Here's a bag of goodies and treats. Enjoy. And that was about it. The next year, we had some local treats and we just had tea and biscuits with family members. And this year crept up on me because we had made some friends who were Torah observant and um, they haven't been doing Passover before. So there was a lot of pressure on me actually to prepare to teach or to guide them on how we do Passover. And we were having a Bible study, or supposed to be, and I realized, oh my goodness, Purim is on the Bible study. Cancel <laughs> Passover, run to the shop, buy anything that's sweet from the desks <laughs> or from the, uh, uh, the shelves, just grab it and go. And I was actually so impressed. I, I, I'm telling you, God must have made the time to stop because I cleaned well my husband helped cleaned cooked and decorated in an hour in one hour and all and I even managed to get an outfit <laughs> so it was so hectic but so much fun and um, this time with the bible study we could include the kids because usually the kids don't really partake in the bible study because of some serious issues that we talk about mm -hmm. but then so they had it and then halfway through the story because I was just too tired to prepare a whole thing I let them watch a YouTube movie <laughs> and then we had a, a power cut so I had to finish the story but it was so special with candlelight um, oh. and then afterwards with some a wonderful wonderful meal but I think this period stood out for me because of the uh, building up that happened so many views that I saw um Bill I I don't remember his surname the the rabbi mm -hmm. son Bill, mm -hmm. Bill yeah. Bullock uh-huh <laughs> so his way of saying that what if we saw the king as our father and we place ourselves in one of the two queens whether we are like Varsity or whether we are like Queen Esther so that just blew my mind in another way of not over romanticizing it all i'm not i'm a more logical person than a fantasy person so it made so much more sense because i knew it's not really the romance like a hallmark movie yeah <laughs> <laughs> um and then also i joined the the conference of course that was held in south africa and that was just amazing um for me i know that usually Purim should be a party and and celebrate with others but my husband was involved in an um, event on that sabbath so i stayed home alone and made myself some treats and it was really like although i just said i don't like over romanticizing things <laughs> it was truly like a date day with me and the father so it was so wonderful. I think sometimes we can get so caught up in, we need to have a meal, we need to have a party, we need to prepare these things. Oh, I need to prepare something for the kids. I need to, which is special and great. Mm -hmm. But I think just that I had a really intimate 
say weekend. So that was wonderful for me, which is not the usual way of doing Piram that others would do it. So Piram is a really special festival for me because that was the first thing we did after deciding we're going to keep the times as prescribed in the Bible. Wow, that is so beautiful. And I loved how you did the the simple, simple decorations. You just wrote out some little signs and you put them up and, and you know, you, you just, you put a little scarf over your head and you, you know, it was just how you did it was so, um, it, it looked effortless, but it looked beautiful and it looked meaningful. Uh, and yet you didn't have to stress out and you actually got to enjoy right instead of <laughs> instead of killing yourself and stressing exactly. out about it and it was completely self serve if someone sees my um facebook post the mm -hmm. alcohol part isn't what we drank it was like the last four years alcohol that i put there to represent Boston's party <laughs> <laughs> although so we did enjoy a glass of wine but i want <laughs> also to have be fun when the kids come in and also the adults didn't expect it because the other group they didn't even know about Purim or something like that so I wanted mm -hmm. to do also uh, some catchy things so that as they get a drink or as they make coffee or as they dish up some soup there's something to look at and read and laugh about so I thought and that's easy taking some uh, sticky notes or post-its I don't know what you call them there and just writing something funny or drawing a picture not too difficult. <laughs> oh, I love that so much. Sombra, are you here with us right now? I, you have your camera off. Okay. Yep. So, so I was going to ask you, do you have a, um, do you have a, something you want to share about your Purim this year or, or anything in particular? Well, we didn't do Purim this year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I, I have in the past. Mm -hmm. um, this year we've joined with Joe Dumond and he doesn't do Hanukkah or Purim. Mm -hmm. And it's a little odd for me to not do it. Mm -hmm. So I think my Wi Fi is slow, is it? Um, you're good so far. Okay. Um, so we've done it in the past. Mm -hmm. um, We usually just read through the story. I think the biggest mm -hmm. thing for me is the whole blotting out of the name of Haman. Mm -hmm. We always, when we read the story, we use the grogger when it comes to the name of Haman and we blot it out. And um, the hard thing is, go away, please. The hard thing is, <laughs> I should go in my room or something. The hard thing is, you know, like those, that evil keeps coming up. And it, and it comes out of the woodwork and it comes and it affects you. And okay, so maybe not for me, but I have a girlfriend who really struggled this last week and evil really came on her family, came and affected her. And she had to um, cast out demons from her house. And so I think that's kind of the other, the non-romantic part of the story of Esther I've never seen the story of Esther as romantic. But anyhow, that's the other thing is the casting out of evil that's around us. And um, I guess if you're preparing for casting out the evil that's around you, that's a good segue into Passover as well, because you've got to cast out the, the sin that's around you too. That's, that's a really, that's a really interesting point. I love that you shared with us that, you know, there are people that don't celebrate Purim and that's perfect. That's perfectly fine. It's not, it's not uh, one of the festivals that were required. It's, it's not that at all. But I also love that you read, you read the, the um, scroll and you discuss that. And that's part, that's just part of of our walk and mm -hmm. casting out. And um, uh, that's an interesting term casting out, but uh, refusing and refusing to um, be unaware because 
what we learn about Amalek is that Amalek was the one that would always attack from behind, would always attack when you're unaware, would always attack the weakest link, the weakest thing that was happening in your life um, and in the lives of the people. It would always be, it would be that type of a sneaky, which is why he needs to be, um, let's see, I've got to mute somebody, sorry. There we go. Um, so, oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry, it was you, I'm so sorry. <laughs> But it's really important that we are, are aware, and that's like the training that we have, is to be aware of what's going on around us. Be aware of, of those that are in your community or in your group or in your sphere of influence that are having uh, areas where they're being um, ambushed. <laughs> It's important for us to be aware of that. Uh, and that is the part I love that. Who was that that just said, um, Ruth said, yeah, I don't see it. I don't like to make it romantic either. <laughs> it's like, come on, these are the things that are happening. I love how we get to prepare. So right now we've just finished Purim and now we're preparing. We have, you know, through just a little over three weeks to get to to Passover. So this is our time of preparation. And I love that as a group, when we start preparing together as a group, it's very helpful for us to kind of get our mindsets moving toward how do we prepare for this? How do we prepare for what's coming ahead? Um, and Lori said, we loved Purim at your house, Melissa. Awesome. So Melissa, what did you do for Purim? Would you like to share with us? I actually was in bed because I've been very sick with this oh, pregnancy. I'm so um, sorry. But my kids, yeah, that's that's okay. <laughs> um, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyways, my kids um, watched one night with the king. Um which they watch every year. Uh, and they had a party downstairs with my husband and 10 kids plus my husband. So it was really busy and think I, I just, yeah, I just love Purim. Um, and then the, the next day in the mornings, I'm actually good in the mornings. Now I can get through the mornings and till about four o'clock. And then I read them. Um, um, oh, what's her name again? You know, who does Grace and Torah? She had written out her whole- Keisha. Pure and, yeah, Keisha, she um, had re written out her whole speech um, and we read it, I read it with the kids the next morning and it was just wonderful. It just blew me away and how the book of Esther says to like, um, yeah, to celebrate it and we just talked that we wouldn't even have Yeshua um, if Esther wouldn't have stood up and then we talked about the difference of being mm -hmm. zealots. Um, standing up before the Lord tells you to stand up um, and that yeah and then she stood up when she was supposed to stand up because maybe if he knew she was a, like a Jewish woman he wouldn't have uh, married her and how she had to do stuff that she didn't you know want to do and um, I just thought it was beautiful this year just mm -hmm. to think of we're still in like quite major lockdown here but um, just think of what the Lord's doing um behind the scenes in our lives, like in that darkness. So we talked, yeah, we talked a lot about that where it just seems like hopeless. Mm -hmm. um, seems like we're never gonna overcome myself personally. I feel like that sometimes a lot, but yeah, but, but we will. Um, so not focusing on the masks and the dressing up, but just focusing yeah. on like, we are created and we're put on this earth for touch such a time as this. And when the Lord asks us to stand for him, we better stand or else um, our names will, could be wiped out from like the book of life. And yeah, it was, I think it was probably the most special and uh, deep, like deep perim that we like that we've had. Um, yeah, so for us, it was really cool. And just to think of it a month before um, Passover on the calendar that we do. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was really cool. Like you guys are, we're going to 
to have to say who we are and we're going to have to um, be set apart and with that comes um, with that comes hardship with that comes teasing from others sometimes so yeah it was a really good convo and I, I really liked the article it went over the kids head um, a bit um, but Mordecai was just so blunt with Esther like I mean he almost seemed not even empathetic of what she'd gone through and she just pretty much had to do this like you know sex show goodness I mean to win what did she have to do <laughs> like, it's just crazy and and she hadn't seen the king for a month and like I just think trauma hurt and Mordecai was like this is why you're put here mm -hmm. and in the end she uh like yeah she stood up and yeah it was really cool ah oh wonderful thank you so much for sharing with us Melissa, and I have a scripture. I just was thinking about this. I'd like to read just to continue this, this beautiful conversation. Uh, Psalm 91. And I know you're all familiar with it. But let's just hear it. Let's, let's just let it wash over us this morning. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of Adonai, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the sorrow, nor, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noon. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high God, even the most high, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands, they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent. You shall trample underfoot because he has set his love upon me. Therefore, I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. And that, that scripture, I know that we're all so familiar with that scripture, but it is it is a, a moment in time where we can share the words of the Holy One and allow them to strengthen us and build us up. And yes, when we make choices and decisions and we, um, we allow ourselves to be counted when we say yes and amen to the things that the Holy One is uh, calling us to walk in, there are sorrows that follow sometimes, temporary sorrows, things that are difficult. Um, oh, that's awesome. That's awesome, Sombra. She, she painted that scripture on her son's tallit, um, Psalm 91. There, it's not always going to be a cakewalk, <laughs> you know. And I know that I, um, I'm always encouraging people. I mean, that's just, that's my personality. That's who I am. That's how I operate. That does not mean that I don't understand that there's hardships in life. There are hardships in life every single day. And, um, and that's the thing is, is as we set our eyes upon him, even in the midst of the hardships, even in the midst of saying yes to things that will cause difficulties in the natural, for sure, cause disturbances in the natural, for sure. <laughs> Even in the midst of that, he's telling us that he will support us, undergird us, prop us up, 
with his wings, that he will send messengers to assist. He will be here for us because we are calling out to him, Yeshua T, our salvation. Uh, and these, these scriptures will gird and strengthen and support us and help us set our minds straight so that we're able to walk forward. So when we take a stand um, against things, when we take a stand for the Holy One, when we honor the Shabbat and our families freaking out, <laughs> or, we, or, or our friends or our neighbors, or people are fearful for us that we are you know, doing something that's not uh, what they're used to. When we face resistance, uh, we need to know that his support is here, not only with the community, but he is by his spirit bringing support and comfort and care and strength to us. So I love reading the Psalms because they gird me up. They assist me in setting my mind and focus on, hey, you know, sometimes things are really difficult in the natural, but he's saying, I gotcha. And we have amazing community that also is um, part of our support network and part of our support system. So uh, I love that. Anyone have anything that they'd like to share? This is the round table discussion. So I want everyone to feel very comfortable in um, either raise your hand or unmute your mic and let me know that you have something that you wanna share. Monica, every time I look at your picture, your hand's raised. So I'm gonna call on you. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, forgive me for not going live with my picture. I'm actually no, not, it's all fine. No <laughs> worries. From work, not feeling well. This was okay. the time. So, um, so for me this year, can you hear me okay? Though? Yes, I sure can. Um, for me this year was different in that. Mm -hmm. So this is the first time I actually celebrated it, but the way it came about. So I've been a uh, Torah observant or new to this walk, I, I would say for the past four years. So I'm still in the mm -hmm. process of learning, if you will, and unlearning, mainly unlearning. Yeah, <laughs> but, yes, amen. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm unlearning more, definitely more. <laughs> exactly, as you go on, you like really unlearn more. So yes. this year, I never celebrated um, Purim um, the prior four years. This year, for some reason, I was lying on my couch and in, in, in prayer or just thinking, mm -hmm. you know, I was just mm -hmm. silent. And I felt that the Lord was asking me, are you called for such a time as, as this? Have you been prepared? And I didn't think anything of it. I remember reaching out to a friend and I said, do you ever think you're called to do more? And the very next day was when wow. Charlie posted about the conference. And I was like, well, I, I don't, I, for one, don't believe in coincidence. So I went ahead and I did the package also with the, you know, the oils. I did all of that. And I just said, you know, you're going to really use this time. So I'm, I love knowledge is power to me. So I begin to research and say, how do people really celebrate this? And I heard about all of the plays and all of that. And the thing is, I'm single. I have no children. Um, didn't really know of a synagogue that was actually doing it but see I am a Jacob's tent viewer on mm -hmm. Wednesday and on Shabbat so mm -hmm. I knew they were doing something but I just wanted to know how was I to observe this day and what oh, yeah. I decided to do was um on one of the um portions I think it was yeah it was Charlie mentioned um Dr how do you pronounce her last name Alawan mm -hmm. Her Ale wine, mm -hmm. Ale wine. Mm -hmm. her Esther video. So that week I just began watching the videos. And then that day I said, I know I'm just going to get a greater understanding of this story. Mm -hmm. And maybe next year will be different. And I just started reading it and I started writing out questions that as much as I loved the book of Esther, I saw different things in it this time. Because again, as I'm unlearning things, I'm reading the Bible with a new set of eyes. I love so that. I started jotting down questions and I'm not done. I'm going to go back and see if I can find those answers. And that's what I did. And I enjoyed the conference so much. I can say something shifted and not to get overly spiritual or anything mm -hmm. like that. 
But I can tell you during that conference, something shifted for me. Something, it was almost like, I just felt connected. I felt, I don't know how to explain it because I think I'm still in awe over it all. Um, but something shifted within me, something like burst, if you will. It mm-hmm. was like a release, like a freeing, if, if I'm saying it right. Um, and I'm still asking, you know, what was that? Because I've been so overwhelmed by it. And I sat there and it's like, wow, I can't believe how much peace I am feeling. At the same time, you're feeling that peace, but it feels like you're bursting if that makes sense. And, and right now I'm just praying to ask them to continue to reveal, you know, yes. pull back that, that, those layers and reveal to me in his time, of course. But that's how I observed this year it was my first time. And I felt that I was right where I was supposed to be getting a greater understanding of Esther and being part of that conference. And the, oh my God, the teachings, the I mean, I was so glad when they were uploaded into the library because I already said, oh, I'm going to go back and do this and I'm going to take notes on that. Mm-hmm. It's just, I, I don't know, you know, like I said, I don't want to overly spiritualize it, but even right now I'm feeling like really, as I'm talking about it, yeah, I still feel that flutter. There's more for me to, to unwrap from that conference. So that was it for yes. me. Yes. Oh, that's so beautiful. I'm, I'm glad that you share that because I felt the same way. I mm. felt like that. And Ruth, uh, Ruth is sending hearts saying, yeah, she felt the same way too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I didn't um, overly spare. No, you did not. <laughs> <laughs> no, no fear of that here. Um, yeah, it was, it was amazing. And, um, and I think that some of the things that we had the opportunity um, uh, to, to learn and to hear, wow, Um, setting us free from mindsets. I think that's really huge. That was it. Absolutely. That just resonated with me. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so thank you so much for sharing that. I love it because, you know, your picture has your hand up. And so um, (laughs) Pietra said, it looks like she's praying over us every time I see her picture. (laughs) I love it, Monica. (laughs) (laughs) Kathy, um, Kathy, I see that you have your um, did you have your microphone off? Did you have something you wanted to share, sis? Um, well, it's just been a culmination of things. I'm sorry I was late. Um, no worries. No worries, sis. The, we're in kind of a crisis right now with Abby's health. But uh, this, uh, I just loved it. I love the fact that we got up with South Africa. It really was on my heart because I love Pietra so much. Uh, that it was such a beautiful time for us being on the Pacific coast because I wasn't taking away from my family time and my children. And so it was so beautiful. The oil presentation just, it's kind of like Monica said, it put such a peace in my heart, but it was more, it's like everything we've been doing in the cafe and, and everything we've been studying, the father just has been, I've had so much unlearning to do. It was like five years of unlearning just so that we could uh, begin to receive. And I really feel like at Purim, my um, my hearing is getting fine-tuned Ooh. to be able to hear from the Father. And that was just so <laughs> precious because um, he he knows the beginning from the end. And so we've this last year with our children getting um having such trauma and in our home that he just lovingly with the ruach has been um like peeling that onion and uh being able to get to places that couldn't be reached before because of all the false teaching that we had um i love and praise y'all where we came from um They saved me as a child from a lot of things, and they gave me a love for the word to the best of their ability. And so I am so grateful Uh, for my beginnings. But I am a beautiful way of honoring uh, where you've come from, Kathy. I absolutely adore that. And thank you so much for that, too. Uh, Keep going. I just wanted to let you know 
that's a beautiful yeah. way to honor the people and the experiences that you had um, and not and not uh, in any way putting people down or putting experiences down or but honoring where you came from and yes. now a lot of things to unlearn keep going <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we're, it's just an incredible journey that we're on. And so the, it's just amazing how the father just links and puts everything together. Uh, we were reunited with Nitsa. We talked a little bit, but um, she's busy with her ministry. We're busy with our children. And, but the father just slowly, um, his timing is perfect. And I've really learned that this last year, just to rest in his timing and um, know that he has everything under control. And I love that Psalm 91 oh. uh, and the, the truths that uh, as we walk in, our protection is Shabbat. Our protection is the holy days. And in that, that the restoration that he's bringing in our family and the, I loved, I just love the oil presentation, how they did it. And uh, how each oil I sent you and Charlie and um, the Colleen, uh, uh, it was like a love letter the father wrote to me with during that oil presentation. And oh. so it was just, he's healing that little girl inside of me that had so much trauma. She's not afraid anymore. Wow. And so it was just like Purim was a, I don't know, it just added another level level of healing and um i loved it how he just spoke to me so very clearly and distinctly and mm -hmm. put such a peace in our heart because now we kind of have this crisis with abigail and her health and so i'm not afraid and hallelujah yeah oh that's beautiful kathy thank you so much for sharing that kathy will you share anything about abigail so that we can pray for her um well, the Down syndrome is a unique chromosome, <laughs> um, and she has a spot between her breasts, a lump. Uh, we don't know if it's like a, we're, and we, I don't want to offend anyone, but we don't have a lot of faith and hope in uh, medicine, doctors, uh, and so we're doing a natural healing type situation um and so we are we need to get at the cellular level of her body um i've been noticing some things over the last few months that it really um she wasn't my abby so there's just been some with the the chromosome and the down syndrome it um depletes her body so her we did a um we're doing a vitamin c flush and we had over 50,000 milligrams uh, which is <laughs> huge, but we did this before 10 years ago when she had, um, her bone marrow disease, uh, we went through the same thing. And so we know what to do, uh, but it's just, it's pretty intense. And then just watching your child detox is I'm not afraid, uh, the, we know what we're doing, but we just, we have to get at the cellular level to, there's just, I think there's some radiation poisoning um, due to, she's on her phone and um, we're trying to, it's hard to reason with a special needs child who is an adult age, but isn't chronologically, you know, chronologically, yes. And so um, we've been trying to tell her the importance of not having your phone close. And so there's just, she's got a lot of skin issues, which tell us that internally there's something not right. And so we're um, we're going back and attacking and getting to the cellular level. And uh, we believe in natural healing. Uh, we have a protocol set in place. And so now it's just a process of intense um, detoxification. And we went through that before. And it's um, it's not easy doing that. And so, but it's doable. And the father, I have complete and total peace. There's no fear. Oh, that's good. Thank I have you. emotion in my voice, but that's not fear. <laughs> of course. My, my Asher was sick with a, um, with a rash. Um, they said it was eczema, but he was, he was sick from forehead to knees 
with a oozy rash for nine months and we had to get to that detox level and the medical people all they wanted to do was give him prednisone yeah that's so what happened to us and so yeah 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 i get it thank you for <laughs> understanding <laughs> and, I, and there is a time there is a place for medical i don't want i don't want to hurt or offend the medical field but 10 years ago they said there was nothing wrong and um there was and so that mother's intuition and the ruach um, he led us to a, that, and that's how we found this, the Shabbat. We went and uh, found a, the only church we knew that did Shabbat was the Seventh day Adventist. We knew they had a health message and um, they helped us uh, on that journey of health with food and diet and um, that kind of thing. And, the, and the, especially the Shabbat. But through that, we even learned there was more than Shabbat, there was Torah. So I was so grateful for that journey. And, um, but yeah, so beautiful. That's beautiful. Thank you. Well, Father, we lift up Abigail. We lift up every, every one of our people right now. Father, Melissa, uh, everyone, I, every single one of the people here, Father, that are dealing with, with issues, we, we rest in you right now. We ask for strategies from heaven. We ask, Father, that you would show us your ways and teach us your insights and give us your wisdom. Father, we're asking for wisdom right now and how to proceed in all of the areas. And in doing that, Father, we place our trust in you. We place our trust in you that you will bring forth your healing touch in every single life. We thank you for strengthening and securing, for undergirding and propping up, Father. We thank you for the support. I pray your blessing and increase on each and every one, even now. We thank you for that, Father. Blessings. I, I, I pray that each and every one of you that are uh, dealing with any struggles right now would just be overwhelmed with heavenly strategies and heavenly support and heavenly encouragement and that the spirit that ruach hakodesh would just breathe upon you even today and not just on you in you and through you to everyone in your sphere thank you amen 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 uh Okay, so does anyone else have anything that they want to share about Purim, um, about walking this out this week? Um, hello to all of those that have jumped on and joined us while we've been um, chit-chatting. Uh, nice to see you all here. And if not, then let's start talking a little bit about what's coming up. Passover's coming up. So does anyone have anything I don't want to move on too quickly? Um, no. Okay. So Passover is coming up. So tell me, how are some of you preparing for Passover? Lori, Lori Dawn, could I call on you? Could I ask you, how are you and your family preparing for Passover? Or well, are you? Um, I mean, I'm not, I don't, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but. No, no. we just <laughs> okay. celebrated it this past weekend. Um, I'm on the same calendar as Sombra, so we're got it. Okay, got it. Yes. Um, the biggest, hugest revelation I had this year was um, the idea that the Last Supper was not the Passover, mm -hmm. and I'm like, what? what? So we ended up this year. We had um, the Last Supper meal. We, we did the Last Supper meal the night before Passover, and we did the foot washing thing, and it was really good. It's the first time I've ever done, ever done it, and it was so humbling to go through the little service that we had, and there were so many tears and apologies, making things right with one another, and yeah, it was really, really good. I can hear the emotion in your voice. And I'm excited. So talk to us a little bit more about this foot washing. Okay. Um, 
there's just something about washing the feet of your children and allowing them to wash your feet. Oh, oh I love that. It, 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 I don't know. It's, it's, it's the first time we've ever done it. And it, it was so meaningful. You know, reading through John and reading through what he went, what Yeshua went through with his disciples and applying that to our lives. And, you know, like my 19 year old, he's, he was like apologizing for attitudes that he had had years ago you know, with respect. And it, it was just, it was really meaningful. And I was just really glad that we put the two-year-old to bed before we started, because otherwise it wouldn't have been so solemn. <laughs> but yeah, it, I don't even know what else to say. It was just so powerful. And so throughout all of that, because I knew we were kind of dividing Passover from the Last Supper, I realized I had to totally rework my Passover Haggadah this year because so many of the Messianic Haggadahs incorporate both into, into one Passover service, right? And so I spent the bulk of my week leading up to Passover um, taking the foot washing stuff out and just reworking my whole Passover Seder and it was really, really good because I'd always struggled with, okay, how do I make Passover fun for the kids and exciting and throwing up the plagues and whatever? How do I, how do I marry that with the solemnity of the Last Supper? And so being able to do the Last Supper the night before Passover, Passover itself was much more joyous and Yes, we did still um, point out the, the parts that Yeshua fulfilled in the Passover, um, but it wasn't as serious and solemn. Wow, that's wow. beautiful. That's Sombra, beautiful. you want to you want to jump in there? Okay, so Lori, Don, and Melissa are my best friends, so they know all this. Um, I've, I've really been having a struggling relationship with my daughter for the last, oh, three and a half years. And um, the week before Passover, oh, she went, and, she went and hung out with a friend for a week and didn't come home. So I was quite upset with her. And because of, like Lori Dawn said, the solemnity of the event, we had told her that she was welcome to join us but only if she was going to completely enter into the event. And if she didn't want to in, enter into the event, she was welcome to excuse herself. And so Friday night we had uh, Shabbat dinner, like we usually do. And then we moved to the living room and we entered into the foot washing ceremony. Well, she recused herself. It had been so angry with her. And then, of course, I'm sitting in a room full of men. I've got sons. I've got my husband. I've got my guest. And it's not the sort of thing where you, you know, that you, only my husband would wash my feet, right? And I only I would, well, I could, I suppose I could wash my son's feet. But anyhow, when it came time to the foot washing, I asked my husband, I said, can I go wash Jenny's feet? And he said, yeah. So I picked up a bowl. I picked up some water. I went upstairs and I said, can I wash your feet? And she said, yes. And she came downstairs and we went to my husband's office. And as I was washing her feet and I put hyssop oil in the water that we were washing. And as I was washing her feet, I said, I love you. And she goes, I love you too. And she got down off the chair and the two of us are hugging over the bowl of water. And she said, I'm so sorry that I hurt you. And you know, it's about the repairing the relationship, right? Right. Everything's always about repairing the relationship. And I know she's going to hurt me again. And I know she's going to disobey. And I know she's going to rebel. But we keep coming back to the restoration. And that's the important thing. And that's the important thing when it comes to us and God, too. We're always right. going to sin. We're always going to disappoint him. But if we repent and we turn around and we try again. Sorry, Laura Dunn. <laughs> <laughs> 
Ah. Anyhow, it was really good to restore a relationship with my daughter. And, but Lori Don said something else about throwing the plagues. <laughs> and you asked about preparing for Passover. Yeah. So what, so let's turn it back happy again. <laughs> yeah. So one of the things I do in my Passover ministry, uh, my Passover service is when it comes to the plagues, the traditional Seder says, take your finger in your wine and dip it onto your plate for each of the 10 plagues. And while that might be meaningful for some, I've had I have a, a feeling. Day. I have a feeling where this is going. I have three teenage boys that I did Passover with for a few years. <laughs> okay, Tell me, the, the I need to hear it. Fingers, the dipping of the fingers was about as exciting as my previous satyrs have been. So my kids actually look forward to being able to dip their finger and dot their plate. Okay. Continue. So for this year, when it came to the plague of blood, I had those little plastic shot glasses that were full of red kosher jello. So I passed out blood. Because, <laughs> you know, <laughs> when they drank the water, there was no water. There was just blood in their buckets and everything, right? Blood in their wells. And then, and then there's a plague of frogs. So I throw frogs. I have all these tiny little frogs. And ladies, let me tell you, Collecting these little things over the years has cost me quite a bit of money. Um, sometimes you find the things at the dollar store, but you really have to search and find. I, I have a great big baggie full of little flies. I have a great big baggie full of little animals. I have a big baggie full of, of frogs. But you know, there's this thing called the plague of lice. And every year I have to figure out how to do the plague of lice. And some years I've taken, you know, those little tiny cake decorations, the little black and white cake decorations, sprinkles, they call them, mm -hmm. or colored sprinkles. I've thrown those. This oh, year that's a great idea. Oh, that's a <laughs> great idea. That's a good one. That will be hard to get out of the hair. That will be like lice. <laughs> oh, it was worse this year. This year. I was at the dollar store and I saw in their wedding section, they have these things that are confetti poppers. So it's like little tiny pieces of tinsel inside this, it's like a little canister. And at the bottom, it has a push up thing. <laughs> and, so, and so I pushed up and so oh. the confetti went everywhere. Oh, I love it. It's all in my bedroom carpet. It's in my bathrooms. It's everywhere. And I'm trying to vacuum it up. And it won't come up. Oh, my goodness. That is the best. Okay. So you have inspired me. You, t you ladies have inspired me. I'm so glad we're on different calendars because <laughs> we, get to, we get to do this. <laughs> We get to learn from what you guys experienced. <laughs> have you ever put that strawberry glaze? There's a package that you can buy of strawberry glaze and you mix up this stuff and you pour it over your strawberries and it makes this red glaze. Well, I just mixed up the glaze. And after we went and burnt our chametz, we came back and we painted the doorpost and the lintel of our door with this strawberry glaze. So I had this beautiful red <laughs> guck all over my front door. Oh, goodness. Oh, that's great. That is great. Okay. I love that. And everyone is saying no glitter, no glitter, because it never comes up. It will be there forever. When you sell your home, it will still be there. <laughs> when your grandkids are right, it'll still be there. <laughs> and it'll be in your hair. <laughs> yes. It'll never come off your scalp. <laughs> Oh, that is so, so great. So the best thing that I'm getting from this is in our preparations always to be looking for the life, looking for the joy, looking for, looking for the relationship building, because as Sombra said so perfectly, every one of the Moedim are, are bringing restoration to the family because they are, the Moedim, as the tabernacle is, as the Shabbat is, it is an imagery of the building of family. It is, it's the, it's the building, it's the building of the family. 
And so, of course, in every festival, restoration is right there in the middle of it to bring, to, to restore the hearts. I love that. All these scriptures were jumping. When you were telling me about washing your daughter's feet, I mean, Sombra, unbelievably precious. And th what the scriptures that were flooding me, sorry, sorry, you guys make me cry. I'm a big crybaby around you. <laughs> um, uh, was about the about bringing the children from the north and the south and the east and the west, and they might be living in your home, but they're still coming. And they might be living far away, but they're still coming. And, uh, and they might not even be able to physically get to you, but they're still coming. And that's what when we place our feet upon the path, the ancient paths, these are the, these are the benefits that begin abounding within us. Not only are our children, but others' children are coming too. And yes, Kathy, go ahead. It's, it is, it is so, it is so precious. And so the hardships worth it, right? Um, the discomfort, it just, the rejection worth it. <laughs> I go just ahead, want, when you, when you said that, it reminded me, um, I have a, let's see, 38 year old. I can't keep, <laughs> I've lost track of their ages, uh, son who, um, a lot of things happened in our life and we are definitely not walking in the same way, but with their, with the bringing in of our new children and uh, he took on a brother role and I put him on our, I don't know if it was in the portion or where it was when we put our, to pray for our family. Right. And uh, last month he gathered with us when we went to the beach and it was the most beautiful restoration of family and then uh, I got a text last week that said he'd been four weeks uh, sober. Oh, um, yeah. He uh, his on his father's side, there's severe alcohol, alcoholism. And um, it was just such a beautiful blessing that as we I feel like the father spoke to me and it really through you, Brenda, when you said he would go from generation to generation in the beginning i felt like that was hopeless mm -hmm, but sure. i met you and you said no the father is going to look and he's going to find that one and i felt like that gave me such hope that i was willing to be that one to deal with all the issues of my generation so that it it could go forward um, with hope and life and I'm seeing the fruit of that. It's been a, it's, it's just been beautiful to watch. And I just know that as we, um, to the best of our ability, walk in the truths and learn in each year, we didn't get to do Passover last year the way we wanted. And my heart was so saddened. But when we brought our children in, um, we, we have a fun little thing for Passover where we, we take cardboard and let the children paint red and then nail it to our wall. And then we're on Main Street, so the whole wow. city sees um, wow. the blood on our doorposts. And, wow. um, but they were terrified of the death of the firstborn and mm -hmm. didn't realize how much death and killing is in, in that. So we had to, uh, it really traumatized them. And so we just had to really do a low key. But I am so excited about this year. The father has brought such healing in those babies. And now their Purim was so exciting. And now uh, with Passover, it's just going to be beautiful uh, to see. But I just wanted to share that my son, um, who we, it's, he's been estranged uh, mm. that he, uh, he shared that with me. So for, and that's huge that it was just huge. And I know that it's from all the women that are praying here on the TRK and just us walking. The father's really doing restoration in the family unit. And so he knows where we're at and our door is always open. And so it's just exciting. I'm looking forward to Passover. It was fun watching Sombra. I mean, I thought this woman is really serious about getting, <laughs> checking every nook and cranny. And so my kids are going to love that. They just, 
um, they are so sensitive to the Ruach and, and the things yes. of the father that, um, and you all have become part of the family. They see your face and they, they can pick out uh, certain ones of you. And, and so it's just been exciting to be able to share with them. So they, I'm not a fun person. I'm learning. I'm, I've been so serious all my life trying to survive. And so now I get to be fun. And my kids used to, I always say it's not time for fun. And my older kids had to, um, to live through that. So now the father is kind of redeeming as Job with the, the new set of children that oh, oh that's I'm so excited cool. about Passover. Yes. And we and we we have time to still prepare for those of us that are celebrating it uh in three weeks or a little over three weeks. Gosh, time's flying by so fast I don't even know. <laughs> I mean it's already March. What, what's happening here? So yeah. It is the um 18th of Adar. So we are moving, we are moving right along. Um, how, how beautiful. And thank you very much. Um, Pietra, please unmute yourself. That's it's all good. Um, thank you very much for, for sharing that about how sensitive you were with your children. And, um, and in that, you didn't skip a beat, even in, you know, um, uh, maybe doing your Passover last year a little bit differently than you would normally do. The whole purpose of it is to, is to, is to glorify uh, the father. And that's what you did with your family. You drew the family in and you spoke life to them. And even just the painting of the doors, you know, Kathy, you're making memories for your generations. These children will forever have, these will be their foundations. It's, it's really precious and really, really beautiful. What a blessing. Pietra, sis, you have something you want to share? Yeah, I, I have kind of a silly question, which, which doesn't really matter, but I was thinking about it yesterday. Can you turn your volume up just a little bit? Uh, let me see. And Ruth, um, as soon as Pietra is done, you want to jump in? Okay. Can you hear me better yes, now? Yes, we can hear you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, good. So it's a silly question, but it's something uh -huh. that I was wondering about, about, so with the unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. Is bicarbonate of soda seen as a leaven? Because I don't know what I'm going to use to scrub my pants with. <laughs> <laughs> salt, sister. <laughs> you can use salt to scrub your pants with. <laughs> Anything that, anything, well, okay, now, the spectrum is huge. How people, uh, how people walk in this, that is completely uh, up to them. If you want to get real technical, anything that, anything that would create a bubble or anything that would ca cause, you know, bubbles or create any type of rising, yeah, yeah, that's what you want to stay away from. So, um, but you can scrub your pots and pans with salt. Okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah, you can. <laughs> yeah, just be careful with the Teflon pans. That's different. <laughs> okay. You need to you need to sponge on those. But but uh, like your any of your cast iron anything like that, you can put uh, salt in there and scrub it with that. So it's all good. Okay. <laughs> all right. Sombra is saying uh, she's giving us a scripture in Ezekiel forty five eighteen, and we'll read that in just a minute. Uh, Ruth, sis, did you want to share something? Hi, Shalom. Hi, yeah, Shalom. Because I'm nursing, but um, it's all good. Yes, I just wanted to touch on um, establishing those um, family traditions with your children is so important. Like we've been um, in this walk now for a little over 10 years. And, you know, in the beginning, it's like, okay, I don't want to do any of the man-made traditions. So we kind of just set all that aside. And um, the kids, I mean, are kind of, I feel like they're left out. I feel like we, we, we did leave them out in the beginning. So now I'm really trying to be more creative. And I mean, it's, it's just balancing it all because I love how they talked about this being seldom, right? Creating those moments and also teaching them those. Because I mean, I grew up in the church and we had a lot of those moments. So yeah. <laughs> I'm like, okay, how do we make it? fun and engaging for them as well because you know it has, it's just planning to do it at their level and um so last year when we did Passover I did include more of definitely um 
child appropriate things for them to do like decorating mm -hmm. The, you know with the curtain the doorpost for Passover um I like the ideas that they shared about the flies I'm gonna have to go to the dollar store and yeah buy some of those little props because those those they trigger they're like you're saying those are going to establish those core memories for them yes so 100%. Even feast of 11 you know when we're cleaning and um I have them go look under the couches and you know they look forward to those the, that time with you especially mm -hmm. It's very, very good reminders. I'm getting a lot of good stuff. <laughs> Me, too. My <laughs> Me too. I'm thinking about my grandkids. Um, <clears throat> I want to have my grandkids here for Passover and I'm, and I'm trying to think of age appropriate things for them. I've been out of the children game for quite a while. My kids are older than all of you. So, <laughs> so um, I'm going to have to redo this with thinking things through. So I'm going to be picking your brain, Sombra. Go ahead. Good. So the and if you can share the Haggadah, that would be great. I would love to look at that. Say that again, Sombra. No, uh, Ruth was asking for Lori Don's Haggadah. Lori Don oh, wrote Haggadah, mm -hmm. so maybe she could post it on in the Mi Miwi. Okay. So, so I was going to say, um, the first year that I did the that thing with the flies, I also set my Shabbat my Passover table with fly swatters. And everybody's like, why is there fly swatters? Everybody had a fly swatter. I, said, I love it. <laughs> oh, I'm know. writing that down. Okay, never mind. I'm going to video you. I'm going to do a whole thing. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to video you. I want fly swatters at my table. <laughs> First of all, you have to start with a ridiculous personality. Okay, yes. so I was going to say the verse that I shared in, uh -huh. in the chat. In, in the chat, uh-huh. So we talked about how... Um, you know, we have children who aren't always walking it out the way it should be or at all or family members. And so Joe taught, showed us this verse in Ezekiel, Ezekiel 45 verses 18 to 20. So says Jehovah, in the first month, in the first of the month, you shall take a bull without blemish, a son of the herd and cleanse the sanctuary. 19. And the priest shall take the blood of the sin offering and put it on the doorpost of the house and on the four corners of the ledge of the door and on the gateposts of the inner court. 20. And so you shall do on the seventh of the month for each man who goes astray and for the simple, you shall atone for the house. So in other words, what he's saying, what this verse is saying is you do a sacrifice for those people in your life who are not walking with Jehovah. And so, of course, we don't today do this, but we offer the, the, we offer the bulls of our lips. And so praying on that seventh day for our family, for those who are not walking in Torah, pay attention to that day, put yourself a reminder and remember to do that on that day. Is that the Aviv, the seventh of Aviv? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So let's write that down. Um, Ezekiel 45, 18 to 20. Okay, good deal. All right. Thank you so much. I love that. Ladies, has this not been such an excellent time to gather? This has just been such a blessing. Thank you so much for being my special guest today, <laughs> all of you, and for sharing with us uh, the things that uh, the life the life experiences of walking in community. That's what this is all about, that we get to share and, our, and, and the things that we do that are different and the things that we do that are challenging to one another. Um, I love that. I want everyone to um, recognize that it's, it's okay. Uh, we, are em we are embracing one another. We are loving one another. And that means that we learn from one another. And I love, okay, so what I learned today was fly swatters and flies and um, glitter are a must, but the glitter is going to be outside glitter. <laughs> we'll do that in the front yard. <laughs> of course, then they have to come in the house. They'll have to strip. I don't know. We'll have to figure that one out. But I love it. I love it. I love it. I love the foot washing. Thank you so much, Lori. Thank you so much, Melissa and Sombra. Thank you for each and every one of you, Kathy, Pietra. I, I mean, I'm going to leave somebody out, Ruth. Um, 
uh, Lori, Don, everyone who has shared. Thank you so, so very much, Monica. Thank you so much for sharing, for sharing your experiences, for encouraging us to enjoy and have and have um, a time of restoration. My big takeaway, uh, my other big takeaway today is the foot washing ceremony. And I would just really encourage everyone to consider incorporating that into your, uh, your time in this uh, for the Passover season. Incorporating that in such a way that, that we are giving place to the opportunity of restoration, the opportunity of healing, the opportunity of um, connecting our hearts one with another in a way that just does not happen without that. There's a reason why there's, there's foot washing. So, uh, so beautiful. Let's see. Um, okay. We have a couple other comments here. All right. So ladies, I'm going to um, end our recording here. Thank you so much. Everyone who's listening by podcast, uh, those of you that are watching the replay, thank you so much for joining us. We love you. Uh, we will continue this conversation. Thank you so much. And you all be blessed. We'll see you next week. And